got the call at midnight. Margo Klevich, the prima ballerina, was in trouble. The mob was closing in, and she was scared. She said to meet her at the alley at Broadway and Great Jones Street at 1 AM. Trigger was nervous, so he brought me along. Thank you, I don't like the situation. Margo's always on time. Let's give her a few minutes, Dan. Then we can blow this popsicle stand. to Margot's penthouse apartment. But we were too late. How'd she die? I don't know. No clear cause of death. This is exactly how we found Margot. She was wearing a leotard and her ballet slippers. The only suspicious items in the room were this half-smoked cigar and this apple with one bite in it. Molly, why would this trigger guy bring you with him? Well, he thinks I'm a good detective. Besides, I think he likes me. Get out of here. He's 30 years old. I'll tell you the truth, Leon. I wasn't really there. It all came from this book. I knew that. I knew it. When I was reading it, I sure felt like I was there. What happened to the other half of the book? Oh, I threw it out. I only read the first half. I'm trying to solve the case by myself, but I can't figure out how she died. Hmm. I've got it. I think I know how she died. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Come here. You be Margo. I'll be the guy she's with. Uh, say they're dancing, right? Yeah. Real close. Closer still. We kiss. Oh, would you cut it out? Stop acting like a geek. What's your problem? I don't know, Leon. We lead such ordinary lives. I like my life. But there's no excitement here. Look. Just across the river, it's a big city. That's where it's happening. Can you give me a hand? Now, you have the number of the hotel in Chicago, and after that, Atlanta, right? Oh, OK. Now, Molly, I want you to promise me you'll behave yourself. Last time Grandma was here, you got away with murder. I was only 12 then, Mom. I can take care of myself now. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> oh, oh, I love you. I love you, too. Bye, Molly. Have a good vacation. Bye, Mom. See ya. This is dinner? Yeah. Vegetables are the source of all life. My mom says that people were meant to be her business. It's all we ever eat. Hello? Molly? Grandma, where are you? Molly, there has been a robbery. Oh, no. Are you all right? What is it? It's my grandmother. She's been robbed. What? Grandpa Albert's missing? Are you sure? Did you look everywhere? OK, I'll be right over. Bye. Bye.
played football. What? I'd say you played college football. Linebacker or tackle. Probably 1959 or 60. Do I know you? No. The way you forearmed that door was clearly a football instinct, that of a linebacker or tackle. You still wear a college ring. If you'd played in the pros, your college career wouldn't be that important to you. Simple logic and deduction. Oh, this way. What? My grandmother was robbed this afternoon. You're a police detective, so I figure you're investigating the case. Her apartment's this way. Your shoes are a dead giveaway. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, who is this? Detective Jack Weldon, New York Police Department. Oh, come in, Detective. I'm Agatha Grayson. I hope you can find my Albert. <laughs> oh, there was no report of a missing person, ma'am, just a burglary. Huh. Albert was my husband. Oh, Molly. Seems I couldn't take care of him while he was alive, and now I can't even take care of him when he's dead. Well, it's not your fault, Grandma. Oh, uh, sit down, Detective. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Now, are you saying that your husband, Albert, is dead? Yes, he passed away. Then you suspect foul play? Oh, goodness, no. Ma'am, where's the body? There's no body. The body is stolen? Detective Welder, my grandfather, Albert, died three weeks ago. He was cremated, and his ashes were kept in an urn. It was the urn that was stolen. Why don't you just say so? Stolen, urn, what? Remains. All right, I'm sorry, ma'am. Molly, I miss Albert. I know, Grandma, I miss him too. Oh, Detective, would it help you to have a picture of the urn? I have one here. All in good time. Right now, I'd like to know what else is missing. I'll take that, Grandma. Well, I really can't tell you what else is missing. Everything's in such a mess. Detective Welder, come look at this. Yeah. There's a heel mark here on the window seat. Kid, if you don't mind, I'll handle the investigation. Now, ma'am, who else has keys to this apartment? Oh, well, there's Mr. Moran, the superintendent, Molly, and uh, the Suzette, my housekeeper. All right. I will need the apartment number of Mr. Moran, and I will need the address of Suzette. Grandma, is this where Grandpa's ashes were kept? Yes, dear, on the top shelf. Yeah, ma'am, please. The uh, apartment number of Mr. Moran? Oh, Mr. Moran is in 1B. 1B. And Suzette lives here. Uh-huh. Neither Suzette nor Mr. Moran are the perpetrators. What's that? There were three men here. Well, look behind you. You can see by the mud that they tracked in with them that they entered through the terrace door. Now, one of the men was fat, one was tall, and one was short. The short man was searching over there. He had to climb on the window seat to reach the top shelf. He left his footprint. The tall man was over here. Now, he had no problem reaching the top shelf where Grandpa was kept, but he was so tall that he bumped his head on the lighting fixture. Notice the blood stain. Fat man sat in this chair. He left a very large indentation. I'd say about 25 inches. And this fat man likes candy. Observe the empty wrappers. He had two of Grandma's candies. I knew Mr. Moran and Suzette were not involved in this. Ladies, take it easy, will you? These clues could tell a dozen different stories. What are you talking about? Well, for instance, why does it have to be three men? Why can't it be one man? One skinny man. He comes in the front door, goes out to the terrace and back in three times. He's looking for stuff, right? That's how he tracks in the mud. He walks over there, stands on the window seat and leaves a footprint. Walks over here, stands on that footstool, hits his head up on that light fixture. Look at that. He hurt his head. He walks over here to sit down, moves around a little bit, leaves a 25-inch indentation. Same clues, different story. I think your story's quite improbable. And I say you've been reading too much Nancy Drew, little girl. Because if this isn't an inside job, then it's an ordinary burglary. It's all so hopeless. Albert is stolen and gone forever. Now, ma'am, I didn't say it was hopeless. Now, we're certainly going to do our best to recover your, your, your husband. What I want you to do is make a list of everything that was missing and call me, all right? Here, here's my card. Okay. You give me a call. Good night.
That's your investigation? Yep. Well, you've completely ignored the scene of the crime. What kind of detective are you? One who catches criminals. Well, a detective is also someone who's skilled in making deductions. I got a deduction for you. You're a 13-year-old girl, you read four dozen detective novels, and you want a case of your own, but not on my beat. Well, I did read four dozen detective novels, but I'm 14, not 13. And I played football in college, but not linebacker or tackle. I played split end. Hey, you, Sonny. What, me? Come in. Help me cross the street. Look, lady, I'm waiting for someone. You mind? This someone is so important, you can't help an old lady? All right, all right. So who are you waiting for? A friend of mine. Well, actually, it's my girlfriend. Liar. What? She's not your girlfriend. What do you know about it, lady? Because I'm no lady. Molly! I knew it was you. I knew it. You did not. Now listen. The first stop is the funeral parlor where Grandpa was prepared. This is a picture of the earth. Keep your eyes open for it, all right? OK. to see poor Mrs. Wallace. Yes. No, I mean, what happened to your eye? Oh, don't worry about my eye. We did arrange arrangements. Right. Uh, we're here to make some arrangements for my Uncle Boris. This is my grandmother. She doesn't speak any English. I am Pierre Laurel, the funeral director, and I will take very good care. Of you. This is our companion model. It is designed so that husband and wife may rest together in eternal bliss. What did she say? Uncle Boris died a bachelor. Well, in that case, let me show you. The... What are you doing? Bloody, bloody, bloody flu. Boris, would you chill? What did you Uh, yes, she says we must take photos to show Uncle Boris's children. I thought she said he was a bachelor. Well, he has children. Um, I don't know how he got them. I... They were here when I was born. Tell her no picture. What do you know? Bloody pick, bloody chairs. Bloody what? What is this? Um, she wants to know what this I is. I heard her. At least I thought I did. Most of our caskets open from the inside. In the event of an afterlife, you may wish to assure that the loved one can get out. Bloody no bloody frills. Boris never went for frills. <laughs> That man sat in this chair. He ate two of Grandma's candies. Fleety, let's let go. We'll be going now. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> this is Willard, our embalm. The tall man was over here. He was so tall, he bumped his head on the lighting fixture. Your bag, madam. I told you no pictures. Did he know? Buddy picked bloody churns. We're very sorry. Bye now. Come you on. forgot your photo. Vladi does Vladi not Vladi mine. Uh, she says that he. Vladi I. Vladi heard. Vladi her now. Where did you get a picture of Albert Grayson's urn? 
certainly to hope people. We told you, it's not our photo. Perhaps you would like to discuss it with Miller in the embalming room. Grandma, what are we going to do? Flutty, Flutty, run! <laughs> Get him! <laughs> Hallowee, did you get me that shipping update from the airline? Uh, not yet, Slade. No, Mrs. Lawrence, we haven't found him yet. Don't forget about his hair. He's getting continental clipping. Well, I know he had a haircut after the picture was taken. I also have the sketch. When are you going to find my rope here? Well, how about this? We call you when we find your canine. Rope here is a poodle. He is not a canine. A poodle. That is derogatory. Mrs. Lawrence, canine is not derogatory. What do you mean it's not derogatory? Oh, uh, Jack, I, I hear you're having trouble on the big one. Hey, Jack. Maybe that'll get things moving for you. <laughs> All right, me slick. You know, I should be heading up that stolen art case instead of dinking around with these knick-knack jobs. You know what they got me doing now? Looking for some dead guy's ashes. Don't sweat it, Jack. This art case is never going to be solved. Anyhow, guys like you and me are like two old cows moseying toward the pension pasture. Less action is better. Detective Welder. Oh, no, Nancy Drew. The name is Molly McHugh, and last night you told me that a detective is someone who catches criminals. I've done just that, and I'm here to make my report. Can you pardon me, Jack? LaRue is the fat guy. Willard is the tall guy. And I will stake my reputation that the short guy surfaces soon. I don't think so. Well, why not? They're directly connected to Grandpa. They fit the profiles. They were eating Grandma's candies, and they tried to get me and Leon. What more could you want? How about a motive? A motive? Yeah. Why would these guys steal your Grandpa's ashes when they prepared them in the first place? Well, I haven't figured out the motive part yet. If you don't have a motive, you don't have a case. I got work to do. Wait a minute. What about the seaport swindle? Now, Dan Trigger did not have a motive until after he busted the perps. The seaport swindle? Yeah. I don't recall that case. What precinct is this guy Trigger with? Oh, well, he's not with the precinct. There's a whole series of novels written about him. Kid, you are living in storybook land. You are arranging the crime to fit the clues. That's what Nancy Drew and probably this Trigger guy do all the time. Well, you don't have to be arrogant about it. I'm not arrogant. Your case is sloppy. I think you're jealous. Jealous of what? That I've solved the case. You got no case. All right, Mr. Smart, if you are so great, you tell me what you think happened. Yeah, well, uh, I see. I'll be right over. I think some kook stole those ashes so he could hold them for ransom. How did you get that? That was your grandma. She just got the ransom note. $10,000. Where am I going to get $10,000? Forget the $10,000. I will go to the alley, I'll apprehend this guy, and I'll get your husband back for you. This whole thing doesn't make any sense. Why would anybody just steal Cheer the up, ashes? Kid. If it makes you feel any better, your fat, tall, short theory was very inventive. It's just not what happened. I'll call you after it's gone down. Gone down? After the bust, Grandma. Oh, of course. <laughs> There's been a major new development in the case, Leon, but I can't talk to you now. I have to meet somebody. No, not Dan Trigger, Jack Welder. No, he's not from a book. He's NYPD. Look, I gotta go. I'm late. Bye. I'm working on the case. I'm a detective. Oh, <laughs> sort of like Nancy Drew, huh? No, more like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm Robert De Niro. You talking to me? You talking to me?
Angel, what are you doing here? You scared me. Well, what are you, out of your mind? I'm sorry, you scared me. Shh. I'm going over the other side. I'm coming with you. No, no, shh. Stay here. Don't be scared. I'm not scared. Grayson, are you there? Yes. Do you have the money? Yes, $10,000. Stay where you are. I'm going to put the urn down. When I am gone, come out and get it and leave the money on the ground. Hey, kid, stay back. Grandpa's in there. I have to get him back. Get back. Get back. No, get back. Molly! It's all right, honey. It's OK. It's all right. It's all over. Take it easy, Molly. It's all right. You're going to be fine. You're going to be just fine. It's all over. Kid. The box is empty. Let me throw it away. It'll be OK. OK. Jack, I almost got killed. Molly, this was a setup. In a ransom situation, nobody gives you the stolen items before you give them the money. I fell right into their trap. But you saved me, Jack. You saved my life. Don't worry about it, kid. Hey, Molly, I just spoke to your grandma. She's coming right over. I'm afraid you're in for trouble. Oh, no. Grandma's great. She treats me like an adult. I will not have you running around the city at night. I won't have it. Now, is that understood? But, Grandma, look, I thought you said I could do whatever I wanted. Alone? At night? On the streets? Well, it's simply too dangerous. Don't you agree, detective? Yes, ma'am. It's a jungle out there. Good. Well, now that we've got that settled, where are we on Albert? At the moment, ma'am, I'm afraid we're nowhere. I will call on the spirits to guide me. This baby's worth three million dollars, so dial direct. What's all the commotion? We brought in a psychic to help find a job for the museum. What a jerk. Ladies, I'm going to wash up, then I'm going to take you home. <clears throat> right this way, sweetheart. Keep moving. Watch your hands. What an awful place this is, Molly. Excuse me, Grandma. Are you ready? Jack, look. Yeah, that's the Meng Long urn. That's what everybody's been looking for. This is a picture of Grandma's urn. That's the same urn. Albert? Uh, come with me. Are you sure that this is your urn? Absolutely. That's Albert. But it also happens to be the Ming Long Urn. What's the Ming Long Urn? The oldest existing porcelain art in the world. It's from China. It dates back to the Ming or the Long Dynasty, one of them. And it was stolen? It was being shipped back from the Louvre Museum in Paris, and it never got here. It's valued conservatively at $3 million, and half this precinct is looking for it. Well, $3 million sure sounds like a motive to me. Now you're thinking, McHugh. 
Goodness. What would Albert be doing in a $3 million urn? It's an IBM XT. My dad sent it to me from Miami. But why do we have to use my computer? Yeah, because we're the only ones with the LaRue connection. And if Slick finds out what we got, I'm off the case. And if I'm off the case, you're off the case, too. Meaning now I'm officially on the case? Well, seeing as it's your grandfather and all, I guess I could keep you on the case in a limited capacity. No deal. I want a complete capacity. I'm not authorized to take responsibility for a kid. Stop the car. I want to go back. Maybe Slick will offer me a better deal. All right. All right. How about integral capacity? Sort of like partners? Let's say associates. OK. Associates. <laughs> Put it someplace. What's this doing here? That's my lucky football. I like to toss it around before a bust. It's an old superstition of mine. You know, I played quarterback in junior high. Yeah. McHugh fades back. Wilder's going long. She fakes left. Scrambles right. She sees him in the end zone. She throws. Yeah, put it away, McHugh. Put it away. We're a long way from solving this one. Dear, sleep well. Call me if you break the case. I will. I say it was the apple. The apple poisoned Margot Klavich. How? The apple was wedged behind the radiator. If the bite from the apple had killed her, it would have fallen right next to her body. Wrong. What did Margot do for a living? She was a prima ballerina. And what was she wearing when she died? Her leotard and ballet shoes. Exactly. She was dancing. And the trajectory of the apple indicates a pirouette. What? All right, follow me. She's rehearsing a pirouette. She takes a bite of the apple. The poison takes effect. She spins. <clears throat> like I said, it was the apple that poisoned her, and that's how it got wedged behind the radiator. Jack, that's fantastic. Simple logic and deduction. Everything we need is right in these files. Here, take half. I don't think so. What's the matter? Don't you like pastrami? Well, I never had it. You're kidding. Uh-uh. Well, go ahead. Try some. Hmm? Hmm. It's interesting. It's the best. Out of some nonsense about two open crates in the freight compartment of that aircraft. There's a bottle of wine and a package of biscuits was missing from them. Let me see that list of passengers again. Yeah. You got the Paris documents over there? Uh, uh huh. Here. Can I have the mustard? Uh, yeah, yeah. We checked the freight inventory yet? I've printed now. Jack, hmm? there was a casket and human remains in the freight compartment. Yeah. Let's see who picked it up at the airport. we've been looking for. But having a casket on a plane, what does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Jack, when I was at the funeral home, LaRue showed me a coffin that opened from the inside, some hullabaloo about an afterlife. 
Afterlife, huh? What if the person in the casket wasn't dead? What if somebody was hiding in the freight compartment in the airplane? to look inside for the thief. Very clever. Good thinking, McHugh. Thanks. That would also explain the missing wine and biscuits from the shipping crates. Well, how's that? Well, the guy got hungry on a flight and he probably ate them. We are onto something. Let's bust them. No, no, not yet. We don't want them. We want the urn. See? And that's going to surface once and only once, and that's when they sell it. What are you doing? This fly could go down any moment. I got to get to the funeral parlor. Well, hang on. I'll get my coat. No, no. Oh, wait a minute. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. Don't you think you ought to get some shut-eye? Shut-eye? No way, I'm coming with you. No, Molly, I can't take you with me. It's much too dangerous. Jack, I thought we were partners. <sighs> Kid, I just can't. I wish I could. Now, I will call you in the morning. I promise. You're late, Leon. Sorry, uh, I had to shave. What happened to this welder guy? I thought you were working with him. I had to let him go. He was dead weight. So now you want to work with me, huh? Why else would I wake you at 2 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. And welder is in the end zone. The ball is dropping. He reaches, stretches. Yes! Touchdown! <laughs> I want you to give me your owner information. New York license plate, Baker, Louis, Apple, 8103. Stavros, I don't like this place. I think they got ghosts. They don't got ghosts. I wouldn't be too sure. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. about this Molly. Maybe we should call the cops. We can handle it, Leon. Don't be a wimp. Is that bubble wrap sticking out of that casket? That's weird. Maybe they wrapped the bodies in that stuff so they don't bruise. Let's try the back door. Yeah, five feet, ten inches tall, white hair, perpetual tan, I know. It's locked. Oh, come on, Molly, let's get out of here. No, I have to get inside. Let's go around to the front. Come on. Stavros, did you just see those boxes move? Yeah. Do you think those could be a couple of ghosts? I think so. Let's get them. Oh, no. These guys work for Dimitri Christopoulos, one of the biggest art fences in New York. Looks like he's getting ready to buy the urn. Jack, that cut looks bad. That guy had a diamond ring on his pinky. No, it'll be okay. You sure? Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. You know, your black eye looks exactly like LaRue's. Right eye with a sharp cut next to it. Yeah, it does. 
Hey, kid, I thought I told you to stay at home. Come on, Jack. It's my grandpa we're looking for. You can't just shut me out. This is much too dangerous. I'm calling a patrol car to take you home right now. No, wait. Leon's coming back. I'll take a cab with him. Come on, Jack. We'll have a snack while we wait. You brought the pastrami. Yep. All right, we wait for Leon, then you go home. Mr. Thobanga this afternoon, huh? The machine went on the blink. Just tell me with the fluid, Milo. <gasps> Jack? Hmm? Something's still bugging me. What's that? I don't understand how Grandma fits into this whole thing. I mean, why would they give her the urn only to steal it back again? That's the only missing piece. But I think I got it figured. And something you said, give me the clue. What if LaRue has a deal to sell the urn to Christopoulos for 100000 maybe 150? But the newspapers are saying this urn is worth 3 million. Well, LaRue says, I ain't getting my 10 cents on a dollar, so he wants more. Meanwhile, here come Christopoulos and his men to make the buy on the same day that Aggie is picking up Albert's ashes. Well. If LaRue has any chance to get any more money, he's got to hide the urn and fast. I'll be right with you, Mrs. Grayson. Uh. Willard, quick, put Grayson in the main room. What? No, do it now. Examine it within the privacy of your own home. Of course, when LaRue says he's not going to come up with the urn, Christopoulos sticks this diamond pinky guy on him. That gives him this black eye. But LaRue still ain't coming up with the urn. So, reluctantly, Christopoulos has to agree to the higher price. Now, LaRue, Willard, and the short guy break into your grandma's apartment and steal the urn. It all fits, neat as a pin. Jack, you just made a multiple deduction. Yeah, but the last thing that you said was that LaRue and me had the same black eye. That was the missing piece. So I figured that half of that multiple deduction belongs to you. Hmm. You and me, we make a pretty good team. Jack, did you always want to be a detective? No. I wanted to be a professional football player. What happened? Busted my knee in college. So the following year, I joined the force. It was 25 years ago. What I don't understand is why they give you all the small cases. I'm not a lieutenant. I was up for lieutenant once. But a couple of weeks before the paperwork cleared, I busted this kid for drunk driving. It turns out he's some politician's kid or something. So there's a lot of pressure, you know, to drop the charges. But the thing of it is, we find out that his car hit a derelict that night and hurt the guy pretty bad. But still, they want to sweep it under the rug. I wouldn't do it. So the kid goes away. And so is my promotion. It really stinks. And more than stinks. It was a heartbreak. So let me tell you something. This case is going to put me right back up there. I bring in the Ming Lung, a lot of things are going to change, let me tell you. Jack. Jack it up. It's mm -hmm. 6 a.m. Leon never came back and the hearse just left. Thank you. Oh, no. 
I didn't see anybody in there. I hope we didn't miss it. I'm going in. While you go around to the front, I'll just snoop around the back. You go back to the car. Look, Jack, I really think that we should check the back. You do like I told you. You go back in the car. Tell me to get in the car. Okay, Molly, just please untie me. Okay, just one minute. I have a hunch Grandpa's in here. That's why they use bubble wrap. It's about time you were back. Milo made me stop for donuts. You idiots. Here's a It's a car loaded up and moving out. Vite, vite. Idiots. I can't get this one open. Molly! I've almost got it. Now! Someone... Molly, you better untie me. Money's in the case. Urns in the casket. <laughs> you stiff guys are too much. Let's see it. Let's see the money first. Three hundred G's. It's all there. My beer? All I want is 10 cents on the dollar. Police! 
Police officer, everybody freeze! think when I was locked in that casket. Uh-huh. Well, I feel like you and I... Yeah? You and I have known each other a while. Mm -hmm. Molly, Leon, come along. Listen, I'll be right back. Right. Molly, I think it's time our relationship became more serious. More intimate. No, no, no. Wow. It really is beautiful. Imagine this treasure on your grandma's bookshelf. Now it's safer. I think Albert is very happy here. We well, always love museums. Mom, you didn't. Grandpa? Molly, you know I shave now. You do, Leon? Really? Yeah, twice a week. She does look a little manly, dear. But that's all the fashion nowadays. I think she's up to something. Now, Molly, mind your own business. Mom, I want you to know that Molly and I had a long discussion. And we've decided her detective days are over. Right, Molly? Molly? Hello, Jack. Look, I'm at the Museum of the City of New York, and I think there's a robbery about to go down. Are you sure? Yeah, I saw this woman fiddling in her purse. I think she's got a gun. Ah! What's going on? I gotta go. Molly. Molly. A man such as myself fancies a more meaningful relationship. Ah! I just heard they found Leon. Yeah, they found him wandering around the botanical gardens. He doesn't remember a thing. Listen, Molly, this gang of Amazon ladies is driving the department crazy. Do you have anything I can use? Yeah, I got lots of stuff. I want a piece of the action. Well, if you got something good, then you're in. OK. There were three women, one blonde, one brunette, and one redhead. Only they weren't women. This is starting to sound familiar. They were men dressed as women. The brunette had a very distinct Adam's apple. Women don't have them. And look at the size of the shoe. Now, no woman has a foot this big. 
This is good stuff. Listen, I just found a new pastrami joint over on Madison. What do you say you and me get over there and grab a couple of lean ones and make a deal? What sort of deal are we talking about? The usual arrangement, integral capacity. I was thinking more along the lines of a full partnership. You'd have to join the force. Well, I'm too young. Well, then settle for almost partners. I'll think about it. You think. I'll eat.